All right, we're gonna be talking about perspective today. Perspective is a category of techniques used to create depth in art, uh, usually using linear geometric form. Uh, in this class, we will cover intuitive perspective, isometric perspective, and linear perspective. So we're gonna be talking about all those today. A couple of important uh, vocabulary words. We're gonna be using a horizon line. And that's gonna be a line through the middle of the paper, sort of delineating the ground and the sky. Uh, we're also going to be using orthogonal lines, which are going to be diagonal lines that represent the edges of the forms that are going backwards in space away from the viewer. Uh, and they're going to be diagonal um, because of that. And we're going to be using vanishing points uh, for the linear perspective later on. And these are lines where all of the diagonal lines converge and meet, like here and here. Um, we'll be using those for the linear perspective. All right, so we're starting with intuitive perspective. Intuitive perspective involves using diagonal sides called orthogonals on an object to make it look three-dimensional. Rather than using set rules, the artist uses their intuition to make objects look 3D. So we're gonna have diagonals to make it look like the object is going away, uh, but you just use your intuition for this. So for this first one, we're gonna use intuitive perspective uh, to make the houses look three-dimensional. So all you're going to do for this is kind of draw the sides onto the houses. So again, for intuitive perspective, we're wanting to use our intuition. So we want to make them look like they're going backwards in space, but we're just worrying about using our own kind of intuitive feelings for that. So it's okay if it's not perfect. I obviously could do it completely perfect, but I'm not gonna do that. Just to make it easier on you. No, I'm just teasing. Uh, but yeah, you just try to use your intuition rather than using any sort of tools or system for this. All right, so let's finish these out. We want these all to kind of be going the same general direction. And if you want to add like a window here, important thing is that the top and the bottom are like at a diagonal going off. Okay. Same thing here. We generally make them all go in the same direction. Like I said, that makes them the most visually convincing. All right. So you've probably done a little bit of intuitive perspective in the past. I think most people kind of do it fairly naturally as part of their drawing development. If I want to do a little door on the side, there we go. All right, so that's the idea, that's intuitive perspective. That's the simplest one. Um, and you're just using those diagonals. They're all kind of going in the same direction generally, but we're not taking any special measures to make them parallel or anything like that, or use a vanishing point. All right, so next we're gonna talk about isometric perspective. Isometric perspective is the same general concept as uh, intuitive perspective, except you want to make sure all of the diagonals are parallel. Um, so all of the orthogonal lines here going in the same direction always be parallel. All right, so those are the important points there. You see this used a lot uh, by um, uh, MC Escher to make these like visual paradoxes. It's a really cool thing you can do with isometric perspective. It doesn't look or it doesn't work perfectly. So you can make these visual paradoxes like this, where it looks like it's going up, but backwards in space at the same time. It's visually confusing. You also see it a lot in video games uh, that aren't like fully 3D rendered. Uh, you'll use an isometric perspective to create like a large three-dimensional field. Um, so yeah. So now let's do a little isometric perspective. So we're gonna use isometric perspective to draw three more boxes and we want to try to keep the diagonals parallel. So the important thing with this is that those diagonals are parallel. So let's get out some colored pencils here. Ooh. All right, let's see. Let's use a nice blue for this. I should have sharpened up my colored pencils. So we're gonna draw, we're gonna add another box, but first we're gonna draw out some lines here. So I'm gonna use this box here as a guide just make some parallel guidelines coming out from there. All right, so now I'm gonna line up this edge of the ruler with this edge here. I'm gonna draw a line on the other side. 
nice and long. Now I know that this line here and this line here are parallel. So all these lines are running parallel right now. I'll put another guideline up here to draw our first box. So that's going to be our first box. We're going to have kind of, this is going to be the top up here. And we'll have the sides coming down. So how do we do the sides? Let's go ahead and draw in the top there. Keep this just in case we need it later. So if we're going to draw in the top here, I'm going to use my ruler, my straight edge, keep all my lines straight. All right, so this is the top of my first box here. And then these boxes need to go straight vertical, or these lines, these edges need to go straight vertical. So these sides are going to go straight vertical. And then we just need to draw the bottom edge here. So we want that to be parallel, so we could either make it parallel like this. Oops, let's get all that nice and parallel. Like that. Or you could just make it parallel to this bottom edge here. Make it parallel there. Um, so almost there. When you're doing uh, perspective drawings, it's usually nice to have an eraser. It's going to come straight down to here, right? I'm going to try to demonstrate using a ruler <laughs> instead of getting lazy so it looks nice. All right, so I want that, this edge here, to be parallel to this one here. So this new one here, one parallel. Almost goes behind that box. And that's why we have the eraser. Clean everything up. All right, so the nice thing about making all these orthogonals parallel is I could draw this out as big as I wanted it to be, and my isometric system of drawing would still work. Uh, we got to do three of these, so let's do one more. Just put it over here somewhere. Uh, let's see. I'm going to make it right here. So I'm going to use the guide lines from my first box. Let me get it parallel. I'll do one here. Let's do one. one coming up this way. So now I'm just checking with my eyes. I want to make sure this line is parallel to my ruler and this line is parallel to my ruler. There. And we can also use this and then the back edge of the ruler there. All right, so now we've got a nice top for it. Everything's nice and parallel. We can draw in the box. It's good to practice, like, freehanding this stuff. But if you're struggling with it, you might want to use the ruler, especially when you're doing your final project drawings. It really helps keep everything nice and neat and clean. You gotta find a balance between like practicing skills like drawing straight lines and using tools to help you out, you know. So we also all wanna get our skills better, but at the same time, we want what we're doing now to look as good as possible, right? So again, these edges going down, the sides going downward, uh, need to be vertical. And then we'll just use this here. Is our guideline. I think I have a little more drawing down than to do. Let's actually use that. All right. And then we know that that bottom edge is also going to be parallel to here. So scooch it up. Drop in kind of a guideline here. I'm not sure if that's in the right place, but we'll drop it in. That's pretty good. So this is actually going to extend from the corner. We can use that as a guideline and make it parallel. We're just scooching it up just a little bit. All right. And there is our isometric perspective boxes. All right. So there we go.
isometric perspective, just like intuitive perspective, except you have to make sure all the orthogonals are parallel. All right, what's next on here? All right, so for this one, we're going to use the isometric grid to draw a city in isometric perspective, draw at least 10 buildings. Uh, so there should be an isometric grid printed on here. Basically, it's just like some parallel diagonal lines that are printed onto here to make it uh, isometric. So what you're going to do is you're going to start with the top of a building. I would say start near the bottom of the space here and draw on the top. The top can be a square or a rectangle, it doesn't matter. We just want to make sure we're following the isometric grid here. And then we can draw the building going straight down like so. And you'll notice your vertical line should go through all of the little intersections on the grid. So you can use that to help yourself stay uh, vertical as well. You'd also draw little windows on here if you want to use the diagonal lines, the orthogonal guides there. You can add windows and stuff. And they just kind of follow those orthogonal lines. And then the sides are straight vertical. Kind of like that. Uh, let's add another one. Let's say we want to do a, let's do a pitched roof. We're going to do, let's see. So here will be base maybe like this maybe here if we want to do a pitched roof we can go up follow this back so this is like a triangular prism roof so we want the back edge to be parallel to the front edge here so we're just kind of lining up the ruler here with this edge here, drawing that guideline. All right, now we've got kind of a pointed roof here. Because this is coming up at an angle, we've got this triangle thing happening, it's not going to follow the isometric grid. So you kind of have to make sure that this edge here and this edge here are parallel by hand. But yeah, you don't have to use like a colored pencil to draw this, you could just sketch lightly and then erase your sketching when you're done. But yeah, something like this. All right, so there's our second building. But that's pretty much the idea, yeah. Something lower. Just going to start by drawing in a rectangle using the isometric grid. And then you'll drop the edges straight down. I feel like I'm getting a little off. Shoop. 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 It's my next building. I want to add windows. You can do that, whatever. Yeah. So yeah, if you want to make like a kind of industrial, or maybe not industrial, like an office downtown here, <laughs> a lot of tall buildings, it's pretty easy to do. You'd also do like more of an old timey or fantasy city, you could draw like a castle, you could draw like a futuristic space city. If you apply some theming to this, it'll make it more interesting, but that's the basic idea for how you do it. You're going to do... Um, at least 10 buildings but that's how just repeat that process until you got them all um cool let's say you want to do a pyramid top on one of these buildings let's do that real quick as well uh so you'd start off with a square here so we're going to do like a three by three square this is kind of a cool trick you can do this with linear perspective too um so i'm going to draw up my square I'm going to do some diagonals, connecting the corners. All right, then from this intersection here, I'm going to go straight up. I'm going to make it a tall sort of point. 
And then you can connect the corners here to the top of the point. So yeah, this gives kind of a spire or a pyramid shape at the top. Let me go straight down from here. You can even add, if you want, you can have like a little walkway. Like Minneapolis, they do these skywalkways. So in the winter, you don't have to walk in the street. This one is not closed. This is going to be an open skywalk way. But yeah, you can add all sorts of fun stuff like that. Kind of make your city interesting if you'd like. Get a little more imaginative with it. Whatever. Anyway, you need 10 of those. How many do I have? One, two, three, four, five. So you'd need another five if you're following along. I'll let you do those other five though. Uh, cool. Get this out of here. And now we're talking about linear perspective. All right, so uh, linear perspective, the way you see something is gonna be determined by uh, how you're looking at it. Um, and you're gonna use one point perspective if you're looking straight at something and two point perspective if you're looking at it from the corner. So this is kind of our little demo of this. If you got the viewer, they're looking straight forward. If you got the front of the object and it's facing directly to them, parallel to this line. It's going to be in one point perspective. So if it's like, if we imagine like the line of sight coming straight out from our viewer, if the front of it here is at a right angle, it's going to be one point perspective. Uh, now, if you got a corner leading right, right here, the closest thing to the viewer is the corner. That's going to be two point perspective. So this is just showing that like the method you use to draw it depends on how you're looking at the object. Someone outside having a rough time today. All right. So, uh, let's take a look. So for this, you're going to draw, um, a horizon line, orthogonal line, vanishing points, vertical lines, and horizontal lines using different colors and label each. So let's start with, well, let's just work our way through. Uh, we'll start with the horizon line. I gotta sharpen some pencils. So start with the horizon line. Horizon line can be a little tricky to find, uh, but really it's just going to be where the sky and the ground uh, kind of meet. Uh, so I think it's going to be right here. could also be up here somewhere. So one easy way to find the horizon line is to start with some orthogonals. So we'll actually start with some orthogonals here. So I'm underlining each term in the color I'm going to use. So we'll do the horizon line in red there, uh, but we'll do our orthogonal lines in blue. All right, so let's do a couple of orthogonals. The orthogonal lines are going to be these strong diagonal lines. So this sidewalk one here, that's a really clear orthogonal. They're not always going to be 100% straight. They might be a little bit curvy. Uh, people don't build things absolutely perfectly. You just want to get kind of the general line of that. Uh, so let's look for another one. This one here is pretty good where we got the window sills all in a line. That'll be a good orthogonal. All right. And then when they cross, that's where our vanishing point's going to be. So let's do one more orthogonal. Let's just do three of each. We'll do the top of these windows here. It looks like all of these are kind of going to the same vanishing point there, which is great. So once I've figured out where the vanishing point is, the horizon line is easy. It's just going to run horizontally through that vanishing point. So there we go. There's our horizon line. Uh, let's figure out a color for our vanishing point. We'll do a green for that. Got to sharpen that guy too. All 
All right. Really kind of make that big and dark. Um, and then what do we need? Vanishing points. Some vertical lines and horizontal lines. So let's get a yellow and a purple. purple for our vertical lines and yellow for our horizontal lines. Uh, the vertical lines on this can just be any vertical lines you see. So let's just pick out three. Probably mostly be using building edges. As you can see, the vertical lines just go straight up and down for the most part. Like I said before, they're not perfect. But they generally go straight up and down. And then horizontal lines. And we're going to look for horizontal lines like on the front of buildings. So like the side of the building that's facing us. All right. And we're also supposed to label them. Orthogonal, VP, vertical line, horizontal lines. Alright, so this is all one point perspective, so we just got one vanishing point. Okay, so this is kind of a picture diagramming exercise, like you would diagram a sentence. You're just kind of diagramming it to show the perspective. Uh, let's see what's next. We're going to do the same thing here. This is the inside of a room, so it's going to be a little bit different, um, but same approach here. So we're going to start with the orthogonal lines again, just to make sure we know where our horizon is. So we got a strong orthogonal right here. Let's look for at least three of those. Right here we got another one. We're just looking for strong diagonal lines that point towards the vanishing point. So once we've got two orthogonals, we have a pretty good idea of where that vanishing point is going to be. And all the rest of our orthogonals should go towards that. It might be a little off on occasion, but most of the time it should be pretty clean. All right, after we've got the uh, orthogonals and uh, vanishing point identified, we can do the horizon line. The horizon line is going to go through the vanishing point, and we want to make sure it's horizontal. All right, there's our horizon line. Let's uh, color code our vanishing point two. Uh, and vertical lines, we did in purple. So vertical and horizontal lines uh, are gonna be on this wall that's facing us. So we're gonna be looking for surfaces that are facing us directly for our vertical and horizontal lines. We've got vertical. Vertical, we also have them on the edge of this wall. Vertical lines, vertical lines. Got them on these window frames here. All those vertical lines. And then horizontal lines we've got like right here along the roof. Here along the top of this table, you know, uh, here on the bottom. Okay. All right, let's label these orthogonal horizon 
VP vertical lines Okay, so let's see, uh, vertical lines, purple, horizontal lines, yellow. All right, all right, we got all those, we got them labeled. Let's move on. All right, so for this one, you're gonna uh, just finish these boxes. All right, so we're gonna use a colored pencil uh, to draw orthogonal lines from the corners of the boxes to the vanishing point here. And then we're gonna complete the boxes using the orthogonals we've made. So I'm gonna take this guy here. And all you have to do is take your ruler, lay it going from one corner to the vanishing point there and connect them. All right, so now we've got an, our orthogonals in there. So now all we have to do is finish the rest of the box. All right, so to finish the box, we need to know how many sides we can see right now, all right? So when I say side, I'm not talking about the side that's facing towards us. I'm gonna call that the front, okay? Just to distinguish. So the only side of this we're gonna be able to see is the bottom. All right, and that's because it's right above the vanishing point. So you're gonna be able to see the sides that are between the vanishing point and the front. So here it's gonna be just the bottom. So we can put the bottom of this anywhere we want, as long as the edge we use is parallel to this line right here. So it should be horizontal. So let's go ahead and sketch it in right about here. All right, and then we can draw in the rest of the box. We'll have the edges coming up to here going across down here and then up here and our box is done so you're not going to be able to see the other sides because this is a solid box right so yeah the other sides are going to be hidden uh so for this one over here we should be able to see because it's to the right of the vanishing point it's also let's see it's also up above the vanishing point a little bit so we should be able to see the left hand side and the bottom of the box so let's go ahead and draw it out we'll switch it up for this all right we're gonna connect the orthogonal connect the orthogonal and then connect the orthogonal so you can see this is only just very slightly above the vanishing point so the bottom is just a little sliver just a little thin sliver all right um we could also connect this one we don't really need to worry about it because it's going to be hidden so let's just skip that and now we're going to do the same thing we're going to add the back to it so i'm going to make this go back a little bit further kind of a longer back here we'll go straight down I'm going to mark right where it's going to intersect. It's going to be back behind this other box. All right, so we're not going to draw the part that's hidden. And then this is going to come back horizontally. And as you can see, it's just going to be a sliver showing. These can be really tricky. But it's going to look something like that. All right, so almost invisible sort of bottom to that box. Just a sliver, just a smidge peeking out. There's our second box. All right, for this third one here, this one is over to the right of the vanishing point, so we'll be able to see the left-hand side. Uh, it's on the same level as the vanishing point, so we'll only be able to see that left-hand side. All right, when it's uh, higher up, you'll be able to see the bottom. When it's lower down, you'll be able to see the top. But when it's right on the horizon line there, we're only gonna be able to see 
that left hand side. Uh, so for that one, let's take the yellow. I haven't used the yellow yet. Connect the corner. Connect the corner. Those are the only two corners you need to connect. If you want to, you can connect them all. It's not a problem. But once you understand which sides you're going to be drawing, you don't necessarily need to draw all the orthogonals in. All right, so we're only going to see the left-hand side of this. So we'll move our ruler over as far as we want it to go. Let's make this one a little bit thinner. It's like a pizza box. Okay, I'm going to follow the orthogonals on the top and the bottom. And we've got our, what, fourth box. All right, cool. Next, next, let's use the blue. Oh, I have just enough to do all these boxes. This box is down below, all right? And it's on line with this vertical line. So we're gonna be able to see the top of the box only. So we'll connect the corner to the vanishing point here. Corner to vanishing point here. And then we'll add the top on. We'll make this one go way back in space. Again, I wanna make sure that this line is horizontal. So I'm comparing my ruler edge here to here or here, any of the established lines, and trying to make sure that they are parallel. So we'll draw the back in. So this box is getting overlapped a little bit by this guy here. So we won't draw that corner because it's being overlapped. And then our last box there, we'll use the purple. All right, this one is a little down below and over to the left-hand side. So we're gonna be able to see the top just a little bit and we're gonna be able to see the right-hand side. So we need three orthogonals for this. If you got a box that's right over the vanishing point, you don't need any orthogonals. If you got one that's to the left or the right or straight up or straight down, you need two orthogonals. If you got one that's down in one of the corners or up in one of the corners, you'll need three orthogonal lines to draw it. Shumba wumba. There we go. All right. So draw the back of this box. Again, I'll just pick anywhere I want. You can make it as thick or as thin as you want. Uh, make sure it's going straight up and down vertical. And just draw the back. And then we'll draw over the orthogonal lines we established. This is not really even gonna be visible. It's so close. All right, so there are our boxes. All right, same idea here, uh, except we've got more irregular boxes. Instead of having squares and rectangles, we've got kind of quadrilaterals of various forms. Same idea though. I'm just gonna start by connecting the corners using orthogonal lines. This gets a little tricky because now instead of having squares and rectangles that are uh, parallel to the top and bottom and the sides of the page, uh, we've got these wonky quadrilaterals here. But we do the same idea here. We just want to decide where the back of this form is going to be and we want to make it parallel to right here, parallel to this guy here. All right, so kind of adjust that. Get it where we want it, and then boom. All right, now the corner right here of this side has to connect to the corner of this side next to it. So we wanna run our straight edge through that corner right here, this intersection. I'm gonna darken it and make a dot. So we want this to be running from this dot this direction. 
we want this edge to be parallel to this one up here. All right, so there, our box should end up looking something like this. All right, same idea for the rest of them. Can I drop my red pencil? Where'd my red pencil go? That was all right. Drawing those orthogonals. That should be parallel. Again, the ruler really helps getting things parallel, keeping things straight. So I'd recommend you use it. Probably the smart thing to do. All right, next. So we're gonna be able to see this side here. So this is another test you can do to see whether you're gonna be able to see a side. So I'm trying to see if I'm gonna be able to see my orthogonal that connects this corner right here to the vanishing point. Now you can see the whole front of the object is in front of it, so I won't. All right, so you can imagine, imagine these are little walls. If I was standing right here, would I be able to see the vanishing point? And the answer is no, it's, it's blocked by that wall. That's one way to think about it. If I was standing here, however, I would be able to see that vanishing point. So I'm gonna make an orthogonal there. Okay. And then for the back edges, again, main thing is they just need to be parallel. So I wanna make it parallel to this line here right there and then i want to go from this corner i made right here i want it to be parallel to this line here so there we go something like that that looks a little off but that's okay all right Same idea for the rest of these. Let's do them real quick. So you also have to do these interior corners. So it would go like this. As you can see, it's gonna be behind the front, so I don't need to worry about it here, but sometimes you need to get those interior corners. Okay, let's put it back on that. Back on this one's gonna be a little bit complicated. So it's gonna go like this, parallel to this line here. And then this other one's gonna go parallel to this one here, but we want it to be about the same distance away. So let's look. It's about a half an inch there. So we want it to come out probably around here-ish. We want this space here to be similar to this space here. They shouldn't be exactly the same. This one should be a little bit bigger, but not much. And then we want it to be parallel. All right, so our finished form should look something like that. All right. And our orthogonals. Right. We got this one running parallel to this line here. And this one goes parallel to this line here. Seems about right. Tucking that in. All right. Boom. 
Wonderful. Now we'll do the last one here. We'll do the orthogonals. We'll start here. Boom. This orthogonal is going to be blocked by the front, so you can see. I'm not going to be able to see any of that. That's all going to be blocked. It'll be blocked over here by the front and then over here by the side. So I don't need to worry about that orthogonal. And there. All right. And now we'll draw the back edge here. So again, this needs to be parallel. That looks about right. Let's make it go back a little further. You make these boxes as deep as you want them to be. Mm, want it parallel to right here. A little tricky. There we go. All right, so there we go. There's our one point perspective. I think that's the last of the one point. Oh no, there's more. Here we go. All right, we'll be back to finish this off. All right, for this one, we're just gonna be using orthogonals to add windows and doors to the side of the building. Uh, you're gonna use horizontal lines to add them to the front. So let's talk about how to do this. Um, let's see, where's my pencil? There we are. There we are. All right, so um, front, super easy. Add one to the front. All you're gonna do is make straight vertical lines for the sides of the door and straight horizontal for the top. So there's our little door. Easy peasy. Same idea with windows. Let's add a window up here. That's a weird place for a window, but that's okay. It's all about the concept. It doesn't have to make sense. All right. So when it's on the side that's facing us, which we'll call the front, you're just gonna use horizontal and vertical lines. Super easy. Now, when it's on the side over here, you're gonna have to use those orthogonals. So that makes it a little more challenging. So here you can see there's a little bit of an angle to this orthogonal. It's going towards the vanishing point over there. See, vanishing point lines up. So you've got a little bit of an angle to the top of the door. And then the sides are gonna be just the same. They just need to be straight vertical. So I can use this line as a line of comparison. Try to get that parallel. And add our vertical lines. So yeah, uh, sides are just straight up and down. Um, the important thing is the top and the bottom uh, need to be on these orthogonal lines. You can see the bottom's an orthogonal line as well, going to that vanishing point over here. All right, uh, if I wanted to add more windows, same idea here. I'm just gonna do a vertical on each side, and then the top and the bottom will be on those orthogonal lines. All right, so pretty simple. Just have to know the difference between the fronts and the sides. All right, let's see who's next. All right, this one we're gonna draw the whole other side of the street. So uh, let's add some stuff in. We'll start with the sidewalk. You just wanna kind of do the same things that happened over here. So let's just start, I might make this street a little bit wider. Let's do that. I'm going off this direction. So for the sidewalk, you've got this line where it meets the street. The curb comes up a little bit, or just a little, like that-ish. I want to try to make it match this side, more or less. That's where the curb goes up. And then you've got the second line of sidewalk. All right, so if you want to add those little seams in the sidewalk, certainly help make it read as a sidewalk what you're going to do is you're going to have it just kind of go i'm lining it up with this seam over here you don't necessarily need to do that it's going to go horizontally across the sidewalk and then when you get to the curb where it goes down it's going to go vertically down all right so you can add a bunch of those to your sidewalk 
make it look all sidewalky. I'm just going to match the other side of the street because why not? Seems like an easy way of doing it. All right, and then these will go down vertically. Let's just keep things simple and draw some of the things they've drawn on this side over here. Okay. Uh, let's lightly extend our horizon line. It's going to be covered up by buildings, so we want it to be easy to erase later. Uh, so yeah, let's do like a house like we got here. Uh, so to do a house, let's start with the front. We want the bottom edge here, like that, to be uh, horizontal. Start with a horizontal line. We'll move it up a little bit from the other one. Make it slightly dynamic. I just want it to come over to about here. That should work just fine. And then we'll have the corner here. So we want this to be straight vertical. So let's try to line up the ruler with the edge of the page over there. And we'll go straight up. Okay. So now we've got the front of our house. We don't want it to be that tall. So make the top about here. Let's darken that in for everybody. like that and then the side's going to go back towards the vanishing point so we'll have an orthogonal for this here's the top of it or the bottom of it here's the top we've got our, our orthogonals in there we'll decide how far back we want this to go let's make it go to about here ish i'd say seems good and we can get that other side laid in All right, let's say we want to add a door. Let's make this door facing the street for a little variety. Uh, so, since it's on this side here instead of the front, remember the side that's facing us is the front, and then this is a side. So the sides, we're gonna start with our vertical lines. Let's get, let's get my paper all squared up there. Vertical line here, and well, let's do it so we can see. Make it about here. Just try to adjust the width so it seems door-like. All right, so you can see the top of this door is really close to the horizon line. So it's only gonna have a little bit of angle to it. When it's on the horizon line, you're actually gonna have a horizontal line, but it's still gonna be an orthogonal. So you can see there's just a little bit of downslope to the top of that door. All right, if you wanna add a window, same idea. Let's add some windows. Just do it here. And let's give them nice big windows, right? And then the sides are going to be vertical lines. And my flat edge there. So I'm trying to use the flat edge of my ruler to go up against the lip here. Just to make sure everything's square. But you can always compare it to the edges of your paper. That's a good point of reference for your horizontal and vertical lines. All right. Yeah, so we've got orthogonals on the top and bottom and then vertical sides. If you want to do like a pitched roof like we got over there, let's extend this out a little bit. Uh, maybe till about here. And then we can make this angle go up in any sort of slope we want. We'll just do it right there. That seems good. So you've got a little bit of an underside to that pitched roof, kind of an eave where it comes off. This is going to be a straight horizontal line coming off the edge here, like that. Okay, so that's the underside of the roof. And then we'll make the point of the roof right here, just so we can demonstrate how to do it. We're going to line that up with the vanishing point. Make another orthogonal. There we go. And then we want this back edge here to be parallel to the front edge there. So that can get a little tricky. 
So that looks about right. That'll work. All right, so let's draw this in a little more confidently, a little darker. Boop. All right, so there's a house. And if I want to add like buildings like I got back there, buildings are super easy. They're just really big, tall boxes. So let's draw the bottom of a building here. Just gonna start straight up. So we're drawing the front side of the building now. So front will be all horizontal and vertical lines. This one's gonna be big. It's like a neighborhood near a downtown, right? And for the top and the bottom, we're gonna do orthogonals. So the top. You can see this is getting close to the vanishing point, so we got a big slope on that orthogonal. The closer it gets, the more slope we're gonna have. And we're not going to make that building that wide. We'll make the edge of it like right here. All right, and I got a big, beautiful building. All right, so that's the basic idea here. You can add whatever you want to this. But I think if you do at least one kind of house and one building, that should be a good exercise of your skills. You can see this one. Only slopes up a little because it's near the horizon line. But then this edge is way far away from the horizon line. Well, it's like up high, but it's also close to it. So it has a steep slope. There we go. All right, so that's the idea with this page here. What is next? Ah, oh, some more diagramming. Okay, cool. Um, let me make sure I have all my colored pencils. Where'd that red colored pencil go, eh? There it is. Oh. All right, so let's do it the same way we were before. Uh, we'll start with the orthogonal lines. All right, so this is two-point perspective, so we're going to have two sets of orthogonal lines and two vanishing points. So we're going to use this building to figure out our orthogonals. The first one's gonna go just right along this line here. I feel like I shifted my ruler a little bit. That should work. All right, and then we'll do another one kind of along this sidewalk here. Now you can see this sidewalk isn't totally straight. That could be a factor of the construction not being totally straight or of the lens that was used to take a photograph. If it has a little bit of a fisheye to it, it'll curve these orthogonals. But it's not too bad. Just try to get along the line more or less. You should be good. All right, we've got four orthogonal lines here. This should be enough for us to find our vanishing points. Uh, what color did we use for vanishing points? We got that green on there. Vanishing points. They're gonna be right here and right here. So sometimes your vanishing points will be off the page. Call this VP1, VP2. Uh, this is just barely on the page. If it goes off the page, it's all right. Uh, that happens sometimes with two-point perspective because your vanishing points are gonna be far away from each other. When you start scooching them close to each other, it makes things look real weird. So usually they'll be pretty far away, especially in photographs. All right, so now we're gonna find our horizon line. It's gonna go like this. So we got our horizon line, our orthogonals, our vanishing points, uh, vertical lines and horizontal lines. So our vertical lines we'll do in the purple. So vertical lines can be found just about anywhere here. All of the buildings are going to have these orthogonals we already got and verticals. We're not really going to see a lot of horizontal lines in two-point perspective. 
all of the lines that were horizontal in one point perspective are going to shift and become orthogonal lines. So there won't be a ton of horizontal lines. Uh, but we've got, let's see. All right. We've got um, some in this building right here. We'll use those. So you can see we've got like one and two point perspective happening here. This building's in two point perspective. This one's facing us almost, it looks like. So it's closer to one point. Here's another one. That may just be an optical illusion, but we'll take what we can get. So be sure to label those. Oh, I don't have to do horizontal lines for this one. Okay, so the reason I don't have the horizontal lines on here is because you won't see a lot of them for two-point perspective. All right, so you don't have to worry about horizontal lines. <laughs> All right. We got, oh, we got another one on there too, huh? All right, same idea here. Uh, we're just doing inside a room, so let's do it the same way. I'm not gonna worry about labeling these necessarily, but make sure you do the lines. I probably will. So yeah, we're just gonna start by looking for those strong diagonal lines. Good place to check for those are up in the edges of the room. If you've got windows running anywhere, uh, streets, sidewalks, that sort of thing, those are all great places. All right, we're gonna trace this edge here. All right, so there we've got two orthogonals. Orthogs. Um, and then let's find our other vanishing point. I'm gonna use this orthogonal right here. All right, so we've got four intersections here of our orthogonal lines. These ones are gonna be our vanishing points right here and right here. They're going to be the ones that are in the middle, kind of where the horizon line should go. All right. VP, I guess it's probably better to label them VP left and VP right. So VPL, VPR, I don't know. You can know, label them one and two, whatever. Uh, let's see where our horizon line is. For interiors, finding the horizon line is tricky because uh, you can't see it, right? So you have to use this vanishing point trick. But if we just connect those two vanishing points, there's our horizon line. All right, look at that inspirational horse picture. That's lovely. All right, horizon line, orthogonal lines, vanishing points, and vertical lines. Let's just look for some verticals. Verticals all over the place here. So the main thing here is just understanding that when we use our linear perspective, when we use one point perspective, we're going to be using horizontal lines, vertical lines, and orthogonals mainly. Uh, when we do two point perspective, we're mainly just doing vertical lines and orthogonals. Uh, as we kind of, look, here's like a one point perspective view. You got these horizontal lines on the top. As we shift it, you can see those turn into orthogonals. So that's the idea here. Uh, okay. So we've got our orthos, we've got our vanishing points and vertical lines, yeah, vertical lines. Yeah, so curtains work well for vertical lines. If you've got doors or windows, the sides of those are gonna be vertical, so those should all work for you. Easy peasy, all sorted. All right, great. And then this last one, we're going to be uh, drawing boxes in two-point perspective, all right? So we've got our vanishing points right here and here. We'll just go through the procedure for this. So this will be VPL, VPR. All right, so let's see. Let's go with the red for this one. All right, so all we're gonna do for this is uh, pick one to start with. Let's start over here. 
you're going to start, this is the front edge of your box. It's the closest edge. So we're going to start by making orthogonal lines that go from the top and bottom of the edge to each vanishing point. I'm going to try to keep this light. Let's try to keep this light. Use our pressure control. All right. So we go connect those uh, with our orthogonals. And then we're going to figure out where the back of the sides is. So for the back of the sides, just like when we were doing it in one point perspective, we can make it anywhere we want. So we'll make that one go back a little bit. Let's make this one real skinny. All right. All right, so now you should have two little acute angles right here and here. So these should be narrow, small and right angles that kind of stick up, all right? So if you imagine you're standing on this vanishing point here, you'd be able to see both of these, right? So we've got an orthogonal going to all the corners we can see, right here, right here, except right here. So we need another orthogonal there. So we're gonna connect those together. And then same idea going this way. All right, and now we've got our box, so we can draw that in. Um, it's gonna look like this here. I still can't see it yet. Gonna be like that. All right. So you can write this down if it's hard to remember. You're gonna start with the edge, leading edge. Let's say leading. So those are all drawn for you here, 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 here. So we'll check that off. That's step one. Two is going to be orthogonals. Left times two and right times two. So you're gonna do your two orthogonals. Let's do that. Let's walk through this. All right, so we'll do this one over here, right here. All right, so we've got our leading edge. We're going to do our two sets of orthogonals to each vanishing point. Next thing, oh, just oh next thing we're going to do is make the X. So making the X. Oh shoot! We don't want to make the X yet, do we? No, no, no. Uh, back edges. We want to do the back edges first. Back edges. All right. Let's add those back edges. Uh, we'll put one right here. I'm going to start drawing these in a little darker. Yeah, back edges. There you go. Now we're going to make the X. All right, so the X is going to go from these two. So for making the X, first you have to figure out whether you're going to be drawing the top or the bottom. So since this is below the horizon line, we're going to be drawing the top. If it's above the horizon line, you're going to be drawing the bottom, like right here. And if it's on the horizon line, like this one here, you're not gonna see the top or the bottom. We'll do that one next. Uh, so we'll be uh, making the X to draw the top. So what we do for that is, 
from those two points, we do an orthogonal going opposite directions. All right, where were we? I got slightly interrupted. We're gonna make the X, okay? So we need to figure out whether we're drawing the top or the bottom of the box. You should be able to see. Uh, but you can also just try it. You need to do either the top or the bottom of the back edges to the opposite vanishing point. That's how we make the X. So it's gonna be the top for this one since it's below the horizon line. So that way we already have one coincidentally there All right and then we can draw in our box uh that's gonna be step five finish box so we can follow these steps it's getting crowded crowded in box land here that's all right Let's switch our colored pencil color. Make it less confusing. All right, let's do this guy here. here. This job got hiccups now. All right, so we are start with the leading edge. It's already established, so we don't need to worry about that. Uh, next, we do the orthogonals from the top and bottom. So we'll do two to the right, two to the left, Just switch to the blue, make it a little easier to see what we're doing right now. All right, to the right, to the left. All right, so next we're gonna do the back edges. Well, I'll make the back edges of this one. Oops, let's, let's do this, let's do this. There we go. There we go. Our back edges. We're gonna make the X. So this one here. Let's see, here's the horizon line. So we can see it's below the horizon line. So we're gonna see the top. So we're gonna start here and here and make the X. So you can see this box. It's really close to the horizon line. So the top of it is really squished closer the box gets to the horizon line, the more the top or the bottom are going to be squished. And the closer they get over towards one vanishing point or the other, the more the sides are gonna be squished. All right. All right, let's do this one that's up above. All right, up above. So we're gonna start by the leading edge. It's here already, right here. And we're gonna connect it to the vanishing points. So all available corners are going to be connected to all available vanishing points. I'm gonna draw on the back edges. get that nice and parallel to the leading edge there. Now we're gonna make the X. So this one, you can see is up above the horizon line. So we're gonna see the bottom of it. So the X will be down below. Oh, X is me. All right. Now we'll finish the box. One side here, one side here. One side here, there's the bottom. All right, and then we got one more left right in the middle. Let's change colored pencils again. Leading edge, already there, right there. We're gonna connect it to the vanishing points here, 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 
here. So we're basically just making two triangles. Now this one, this one's actually crossing the horizon line. You can see here, this is our horizon line. This edge actually crosses it. So you're not gonna be able to see the top or the bottom. So do the back edges. And when our box is on that horizon line, we're gonna skip step four. We don't need to make the X. So we'll just finish the box. So these two are overlapping each other. We need to decide which one's in front. I'm gonna make the center one in front. So that just means I'm gonna come in and I'm going to erase these parts that are being covered up now. And there we go. We got all our boxes, boom. I think that's it, yep, that's it, end of packet. All right, good job, everybody. There you go, double thumbs up just for you. All right, uh, that's it. That's kind of an intro to one point and two point perspective. Um, should give you a foundation to build upon if you should desire. Uh, but that's kind of the, the idea behind the uh, intuitive, isometric, one point and two point perspective. So uh, there we go.